So this is my uh, solar domestic hot water panel that's on the garage. I have a north facing house so the garage is really the only place uh, we could put it. Um, the location of it is not perfect. It was supposed to be a little bit farther west so it's not uh, we, not getting as much sun as it, as it could. Uh, I don't get the morning sun um, until about 8.30 in the middle of the summer, right around Midsummer's Day, but uh, it does warm up the tank okay. Uh, it's Enerworks brand. There's generally two types of solar uh, domestic hot water panels. This is a flat panel, so it's got a bunch of tubes going through it. It has, um, this is the glycol, uh, there's two 3 8 inch uh, copper lines that uh, connect the panel to the uh, heat exchanger in the basement and so uh, they go up through the panel and there is uh, another type which is more efficient which is really a, a series of round tubes and so it does uh, I think what they call passive tracking so as the sun moves because they're round in shape they're able to get more heat out of the um, out of the device but uh, this seems to work okay it, in the middle of the summer spring and fall but in the winter time it really doesn't do much at all uh, yeah, uh, let's see. Uh, I've had it installed for about four years, three and a half years now. Uh, and uh, as a result, I dug a trench to my uh, to my house, which happened to spur other little projects on the way, and has been a distraction for the last few years. <laughs> uh, that's a, about all I can say about about, about it um, in terms of um, cost. I was renovating my house at the time, so there was the what do they call it? The not the inner guide, but the eco action program for renovation. So I was doing a lot of things at once. So it was an opportunity to really to re-examine the different uh, systems I had in the house and to, uh, to to make some changes. And so it, the downside was you have to do it all at once. You can't uh, take maybe as much time or as one might like. But uh, the advantage is you do get some money back. There were, were incentives at the time. There was that echo action program and then there was another separate series of incentives uh, for the first hundred or two hundred people in Ottawa to, to use these uh, oh, okay. um, from Natural Resources Canada. So I got both of them so it only wound up, uh, I think it wound up paying about half of what it normally costs. Um, in terms of, uh, yeah, in terms of um, yeah, there's something I was. What was I going to say about that? Just in terms of the incentives, it does bring a few of the contractors out of the woodwork, or it it, it brings the people out. And the disadvantage is the incentives have gone, so there, it's not really much of a market now for them to uh, to to maintain the systems or to to keep on uh, installing new ones. Uh, yeah. Oh, and in terms of number of panels, normally you'd probably put two on a on a house, but I didn't really have the room. Uh, there have been other systems I've seen where it's fairly effective being installed on uh, that the contractors are showing where they installed them on municipal pools or private pool systems. And that's where there's a, a lot of demand. I think one of the, it's not really an issue, but just one of the facts is I generally take my shower in the morning and it will heat up and keep some, some of the heat over, uh, during the day, but uh, perhaps it would be better used in systems where there is a demand throughout the day. and. Uh, apartment buildings, institutional, commercial, that sort of setting. Um, maybe a bit of overkill really for a residential situation. There's only two of us who live here. I have a large family, then uh, you know it could be perhaps more interesting. I think it was interested in initially just to, uh, as kind of a, not really a pilot project, but something neat to do. And it, it's, it certainly was interesting to, uh, to go through some of the details and see what the advantages and disadvantages were. Um, well, you can't actually see the uh, the line set. The line set's in a, this pipe, uh, plastic pipe that you can see, um, and it's varying in depth. The soil here is very rocky, <laughs> and so it's really hard digging. And for some silly reason, I agreed to dig the trench myself, and so I had to get out a few large boulders. Uh, I can show you one that I got out the other day. Um, the advantage of being as far down as you can get is that it insulates uh, more, and so I think there's a minor effect of not warming up the uh, or not cooling the the glycol fluid that's going through the line set. So there is some advantage to to, to being lower down. A normal installation would be on the roof, and so there would be an area which where the lines would go through the unheated attic, attic usually, and so 
often there is a space that's unheated. Uh, I'm told the pump does pump it fairly quickly and so it's not really a significant heat loss, but uh, never got into that level of detail. There's uh, insulated it, so there's a pink fiberglass, pink and white fiberglass insulation around it because it's completely exposed there. And then I put a cage around there. For some reason, the first year, I don't know, some cats or squirrels oh, chewed okay. on the insulation, and so I put a cage around just so they wouldn't gnaw on it. Oh, uh, okay, cool. Yeah, and then there's also I've also got some um, uh, alarm wires going to the garage that are going in through the. Roughly in the same location. This is a standard electric uh, hot water tank, um, 37 and a half. Is it imperial gallons? 40 U.S. gallons, 140 liters, something like that. Uh, so it's completely standard. I've got some uh, cable wires on top. So essentially, uh, essentially the way it works, we've got cold water coming into the street from the street. This is a Leave the. Let's see. Oh, I got the order right. Uh, this is the hot out. Okay. I believe it's uh, the cold comes into the, the, this first, which is an expansion tank, so it allows for a slight change in volume in the water as the temperature rises. We've got cold coming in here to the bottom, and then I'll uh, take this off and. Uh, Oh, there's the humming noise, yeah. Okay, uh, then we got cool coming in here. This is the pump, pumping uh, a mixture of uh, glycol, half glycol, half water, and uh, distilled water. And then uh, this is the heat exchange device. You got another uh, expansion, little expansion tank here. Uh, so you're, you're getting the uh, glycol and, and it's mixing with the uh, water right here. This is quite warm right now. Uh, pressure gauge uh, and so that's what's happening right now and I it, uh, wasn't working for two months and I just had, had to call there's only two com uh, companies or people who will, uh, who sell and service this and so people installed it wouldn't uh, come Isolera and so I had to call someone else Echogen uh, Chris Weiss, Weiss vlog came and, uh, and fixed it up and it seems to be working really well I'm not sure I've had it as warm as it as this before here it's saying the storage temperature is 28 degrees which is great You're, um, if you cycle through this there's a uh, let me just get it at the beginning okay so the change in difference in temperature is 24 degrees between inside and outside or 25 now so the source uh, that means the panel is uh, 52 degrees Celsius storage we uh, I guess we lost to be there's um, at 27 uh, and then this is just, uh, I think, I'd have to get out the manual actually to find out what that figure is. I think that's 79 degrees is the maximum difference in temperature. Yeah, I think that was a result of it not being fixed, not working. So it was got very hot. And so when I got plugged in the first time, it was that temperature. And the biggest difference is minus 30 degrees. So um, during the winter time, probably a very cold day. Uh, that's the reading. What have we got here? Storage maximum. The most uh, I've ever had it up to is 68 degrees. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> uh, the coldest I ever got was two. What's this? Um, I think it's saying the number of temperature hours. I'd have to get the man. This is the part I think I'd have to get the manual to figure it out. I think it's the number of heating hours. So it's 410,000 and, uh, and three, I believe. Yeah. I'd have to figure those out. I'm not sure what exactly all those mean. Anyway, uh, just put it back on the temperature. So that's uh, more or less what it is. Uh, you can see the glycol leak there. Uh, this is the temperature really of it, uh, of the temperature right there. And this is the, if you touch right here, it is very, very warm, very hot. So 70 degrees, I mean, it's essentially, I think yesterday was the solstice. Uh, that's as hot as it ever gets in the winter time. We don't really uh, don't really get a lot happening. Um, okay. And, and so these, these wires, like these, is that where it's coming through the, the wall? The that's hot right. Pipes? Yeah. Okay. This is this is the line set. So there's two three eight inch copper uh, pipes in, right here. Um, so they're coming in. Uh, 
Ooh, the only thing I um, oh, and here's the uh, the cord for the uh, so that's the the electrical fi fine electrical cords for measuring. There's the thermostat and out on the panel, so that's signaling to the uh, device in here to uh, to run the pump, and so that's an important uh, wire. Okay. Uh, this probably should be insulated. I probably should have it. It's uh, just sitting right on the on the concrete, which is uh, pretty messy. But I uh, uh, probably should have it on a piece of insulation to keep it off the floor. Sometimes the bottoms can rust. And uh, I did have an insulation blanket on it, and I just never got around to putting it on. But that would be a good thing to do as well. Um, and so, oh wow, 74. I don't think I've ever seen it that hot before. I think it's working better than it was when it was initially installed. Um, and so the uh, the only if a lot of many t times in the year the water's not hot enough and so it needs supplemental heat and then that it, then once the water's been heated here it goes over to the I have an on-demand hot water tank and uh, it would get heated up the remainder of uh, the remainder of the heating would happen so. I can probably do some laundry then. It's uh, very useful for doing whites. Normally, I don't wash my whites on, uh, or our whites, on hot water. But uh, when the panel's working, it's, uh, it's a great use of it. Often we try to pick the warmest time of the day when the tank is the warmest. And so I uh, turn the uh, on-demand heater off and I just let it run off of this. And so we'll let it fill up uh, and take a few minutes and let it be the uh, hot water out. And so, yeah, that's it's good and hot right there. It's just great for the laundry. Ooh! <laughs> yeah. That is hot. Yeah. And so that's essentially free hot water from the sun, or free heating from the sun. Obviously, once the panels installed, but really the unit. Um, in terms of, you know, would I do it again? I'm not sure I would. I mean, it's a fairly significant cost. It's, uh, I think the unit at the time was about five and a half thousand dollars, and then I think I paid just over half of that, or roughly half. So, in terms of the difficulty of getting it serviced, I mean, I think that's perhaps the biggest frustration. I mean, I called at the beginning of April and. You know, a month later, it still didn't hear any from the the original installer, and so I had to call the the other installer, and uh, about six weeks after that, at the beginning of April. So it's been a source of frustration. Um, I think the part of the issue again, as I said outside, was the fact that the incentives create a market, and then when the incentives are removed, the uh, the market doesn't disappear, but it uh, the demand is greatly reduced, and so the the installers they I mean without any and disrespect to them, they just don't make any money really on, on the servicing and it's uh, they just do it if they feel um, the, the, I guess the, the obligation or the, they feel like they're service oriented uh, business people. Uh, yeah, I mean I think in terms of, we was only two of us here so I think it's probably better suited to a, a larger household or more of a a biz, uh, institutional and commercial setting where there is a big demand for hot water. Okay. Um, be nice to see them on. Uh, you know, there's a plant recreation complex around the corner, and it'd be nice to see them heating their water uh, with a similar way. At the pool. At the pool, yeah. yeah. Um, just want to see. Uh, I mean, I think the old, one of the issues is that it's relatively complex, and so it's. If there's fewer installers and you have to be sure that people are going to be able to service in the long term the company that makes it is going to have parts and those are, are some of the issues and I think anytime you get into complex uh, equipment that's still been hot yeah and that temperature hasn't gone down much that storage is still still fairly warm yeah and I have made provision for a recirculating pump just because the uh, I have put in three quarter inch uh, plum, um, supply lines for my house, and it winds. There's one wind up getting a, de a delay in uh, in the hot water. So I think I will install a restricted pump, even though something normally goes in a much larger building. Uh, 
just to get that um, hot water to the uh, bathrooms, uh, especially the bathroom sinks. So that will be one change I implement. I think they're the only other thing I think that I may add on is there, in, I know in New Zealand there was a concern about uh, bacterial growth. You can get, I think there's a Legionnaire's disease um, from hot water tanks if the water's um, not warm but not hot. And so they, in some uh, circumstances it could be necessary to, uh, uh, to have a, to actually connect the electrical heater on, on up, up to the uh, my panel and so I actually have it running for a, a while you know I think it's just 10 or 15 minutes twice a week is enough to kill off those bacteria it's not okay. something the installers are really uh, very familiar with but uh, in New Zealand there are some guidelines for it and so it's probably something that uh, is to, uh, to keep an eye on yeah okay so there's like a minimum heat it would have to reach yeah, once or twice a week. That's right, and okay. so the, the, usually the, there are guidelines. I think for normal hot water tanks, like uh, if this were just installed on its own, there's usually a minimum temperature, and then there's anti scald valves, and then there's one installed over there for the, uh, I think for the hot water going to the supply. So it's just yeah, there's a minimum temperature if, to kill off the bacteria, and then there's a maximum temperature before you start scalding people, and so you need that. There's that. I think it's. Often I think it's between 100, uh, 120 Fahrenheit, which I think is something like 30. I'm not even sure what it is in Celsius anymore, but I think it's between 35 and 38, something like that. So there is, um, yeah. So that you have to do that. So in certain cases, you're heating up the water and then cooling it down as well, yeah. uh, in order to avoid uh, burning people, which is, is is a good idea. <laughs> yeah. It's just that it's uh, often because of all these constraints. Often we're, you're heating it and cooling it. And, Doing these things, but as I said, it does go through a supplemental heater, so that will uh, heat it up a bit too. Yeah, cool. and so we'll, uh, I think, in some cases, get rid of, the, of uh, that bacterial problem. But uh, something to keep an eye on. Cool. Yeah, it's just connected to the general hot water system uh, okay. in the house. So yeah, it goes, it goes everywhere. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, the. Yeah, I mean, I think the only uh, separate system, I just hooked up a bypass for the dishwasher. So the dishwasher, the anti-scald valve, it bypasses the anti-scald valve. So if we want to have extra hot water going to the dishwasher, we can we can get that extra level of heat. Okay. Uh, um, go into the, the dishwasher. But uh, yeah, it goes to uh, all the different parts of the, uh, of the house. Yeah. Cool. And um, but there's no connection to the heating system, or no, no? you can okay. get. Uh, I suppose if it was, um, yeah, if it, we had a boiler system or hydronic heat, where we were heating the uh, the house through uh, yeah, the hydronic tubes in the floor, then yeah, we could get. It could also be heating the uh, the, the house, but it's it currently just doing the hot water. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And so this is. Um, yeah, this is, uh, like you said, a power pipe. It's a, a wastewater heat recovery apparatus. And so as, what you're seeing is, um, I believe it's at the, do you know, it's at the bottom. Yeah, the bottom is where the cold water comes in. And uh, this is coming in from the street. And then it uh, it goes, what well, you're seeing, all those wraps are really, a copper, thin copper pipes that are wrapped around an interior copper pipe, which uh, are grabbing the, or recovering the heat, w waste heat, from, or the heat from the waste water. And uh, this is one of the longer ones. I think they come in all sorts of sizes. Um, again, I was in the incentive program and there were incentives for this. Um, the uh, yeah, and so it it really only works for bathrooms because you need to um, have the water use uh, running while you, you need to be uh, putting wastewater into the into the system while you're running grabbing hot water out. So a bath doesn't work, but a shower does. Um, I guess washing your hands does a little bit, but it takes you know it's usually such a small amount washing dishes in the sink, in the kitchen, um, you know, is possible, but you have to get the wastewater over here, and so if one were to design a house from, from scratch, you could design it around it, so you could, you know, if you have several bathrooms, and, 
uh, and you have a basement then, or a lower area, then the, the wastewater could drain into this, this area. Um, do need to drain, uh, or sorry, do need to insulate the pipes, the wastewater heat pipes, which is uh, not usually done. Um, and this actually should be insulated as well. And that's another thing I haven't got around to, but I should do that to, in order to increase the efficiency. I have insulated the, um, is it four inch uh, ABS, black ABS piping? Uh, uh, yeah, it is, or it's three, I guess, sorry, three inch piping. Um, uh, in the uh, below the bathroom and in the main floor where it's all sealed up now So that was a fairly extensive job and I have I think I have done a little bit But I need to get get dirty and get in here and continue that obviously once it goes lower down into the floor Then that's not an issue anymore. It's once you've gone through the pipe you're done um, As I think I mentioned earlier that I mean, it's entirely made of copper and so there have been instances in various countries and I think including Canada where People break into homes and steal all the copper, and so this is, um, it, it is a bit of a, maybe a minor concern related to break-ins that you could, you know, people uh, could uh, rip it out and just sell it for scrap. Um, so I do have a house alarm, but uh, yeah, I'm hoping that never has to happen. Yeah, that's about it. And so I just didn't think of I've got to set up so it can use this system or can bypass the system. And it, again, I don't have the engineering expertise, but <laughs> I was talking to the um, the person uh, who um, Chris Weiss Flog who helped me out with uh, maintaining the system and whether or not it's better to have this before or after the uh, solar hot water tank. And so. Um, Personally, I think it would be better to bypass the solar hot water tank in the wintertime completely and just have this going straight into the hot water on-demand heater, but I could be wrong. I need somebody with the engineering expertise to tell me. It just There may be different solutions because I've got so much so much stuff or so much gear. Maybe There may be different solutions depend, depending on the time of year. Is, uh, it's coming in, I believe, on the uh, near wall, on the near pipe. The connection point with a beige cap that you're seeing there is the um, is the uh, anti-scald valve. So there's a cold water, um, yeah. There's that is to prevent the hot water from the solar hot tank, solar hot water tank, uh, go, go, being too hot going into the on-demand heater. The warranty would be voided if. Uh, if I didn't have that, so they, the manufacturer, I think the temperature is again the 120 Fahrenheit uh, going in. So that's uh, it needs to be controlled in order to get my warranty uh, and ensure the warranty is valid. And then the insulated pipe you're seeing on the way out, that's the hot water going out. And then there's another anti-scald valve there too, um, in case the with the blue cap on it, which you may or may not be able to see which is for the water oh, going yeah, to the I rest of the house. And so that's the um, that's the, the hot water going out and there's a little bypass for my dishwasher uh, there, which I haven't connected yet, but uh, I will get done at one point so I could potentially have slightly hotter, you know, turn the hot water at a slightly higher temperature and just have the dishwasher benefit from that. Um, it tends to be a bit more effective at higher temperatures. And so yeah, a lot of piping there. Um, did a, did a lot of it with copper piping. I don't think I would do as much copper next time around. It's fairly slow, and I did some of the changes myself here when I made different did different things um, to it, uh, putting in a few valves and, and things like that. Um, so that's that's a Y Whale of brand, which is made by Paloma, I believe. Uh, there are other brands. I don't think there was anything particularly. Uh, it was a, perhaps the cheapest one I think I could find. That, that was really the only reason I went with that particular brand. The company that put it in is a, not a very large or established company, so it would have been preferred to, to get somebody who's a bit bigger and more established and more stable to uh, be able to provide service and uh, have parts. But there are, I believe it is possible to get them, and there's mail, always mail order and internet order.
That's a furnace, a high efficiency furnace. Uh, it has the, in order to get the rebates, uh, there are extra rebates for what I believe are called uh, the electronically commutated motor that, with direct current, which is a much more efficient fan than the old AC fans. And so that uh, particular unit has it. The 96 refers to the efficiency rating, which is uh, again for very high. I think there's one or two brands that are higher. Uh, it um, so my, when I had all of this stuff installed, my gas bills, you know, when the amount of gas used it declined by more than half. I mean, off, off is also accompanied by the insulation of the house as well, which hadn't been done before. So there was a really dramatic drop. And, uh, I'm planning to do my windows this year, so I'm hoping that will also add. Um, yeah, and I guess just that just reminds me. This there were there was a better furnace, which was what they had, what they called modulation. I think this there's this one might have two stages. It can turn on in two different levels, but the actual um, hot water heater it modulates. So depending on the hot water level that this is putting out, it will. Uh, it's supposed to be able to respond by putting out slightly less heat or, uh, as required. Um, it hasn't always worked that well. I have had to turn the hot, that hot water heater up higher than normal um, in order to account for this hot water. We find that the uh, on-demand hot water heater turns off and uh, just puts through the water. Um, not always quite hot enough for everyone. Hmm. The only thing I don't have is the uh, peak saver thermostats because the when I had this installed, I had to install and the air conditioner. I got a new air conditioner as well. The air conditioner, the ther they had to use their thermostat because it controls the humidity at the same time. And so the Peak Saver program is an interesting one because they, if one's use, using the air conditioner during the day at a time when there's huge general demand across the city, then they can uh, cut, they can, I guess, throttle back the um, the. The air, con the air conditioner, but uh, it, their models don't control the uh, the humidity as well. So mm -hmm. I would okay. like would be prefer to have that peak saver, and uh, I think the only I think the only drawback to their this current thermostat is that it there there are newer thermostats that have cycles where they um, in order to recirculate the air, just to keep the air moving, help reduce the chance of mold growing, just keep the air fresher in the house, where they'll, it's a on and off cycle, and so I think it runs about 35% of the time, and so that would be nice to do. Currently, I have a low setting. Again, the fan is a very efficient fan, so it uses a minimal amount of electricity, but uh, with a better thermostat, a different thermostat, I'd be able to even uh, decrease that even further. Uh, so maybe that's something to keep my eyes out for for the future.